Hi, my name is Bianca Lopez and I'm a contributing editor of Hot Topics. So I'm here around a CIO table to talk about this evolving role of a CIO and your growing network. So we hear this all the time. So why don't we just start by introducing, tell me a little bit about who you are, where you work. Sure, my name is uh, Prashant Huria and uh, I work for AstraZeneca. I lead IT for all of the enabling units, so mergers and acquisitions, finance, HR, legal, sustainability, etc., as well as uh, research and development, so our science units. I'm Mark Mostaf. I'm the Chief Information Officer for Atos uh, for North Europe, I'm looking after UK, Ireland, the Benelux, the Scandix, the Baltics, Poland, and Russia, and last but not least, Germany, where I'm from. Hi everyone, my name is Adrian Brooks, I work for Tata Communications and uh, I'm in charge of the Enterprise Architectures team responsible for delivering security at both the service provider and the enterprise level. Hi everybody, my name is Connor Whelan, I'm the Group Information Officer for Jardine Lloyd Thompson. Uh, Jardine Lloyd Thompson are a specialty insurance broker based in London, operate out of 42 countries around the world. Why don't you start us? You have the job to secure this thing called a network. So what, what is it and, and how do you even start describing or thinking about it? Well, one of the things that you know I found recently is people have forgotten about the network. Okay. You know, we've all got air devices, you know, whether it's a laptop, whether it's some form of tablet, or it's a smartphone, and we all sort of sit there and just expect them to work. You know, you take it out of the box, you power it up, and of course it's gonna work. But you know, you need some infrastructure behind it. So the more growth that we've seen in things like you know, the smartphone technologies, the more you know, desperate information needs to be sort of conveyed across it. It's no longer just, oh, I'm just looking for what shows are on television. I'm looking at my banking applications. I'm looking at a whole range of healthcare type environments for me. So all of a sudden, the assumption is, well, I've got this network and it's obviously secure, isn't it? However, when we go and talk, or when I go and talk to a lot of CIOs that are going through a digital transformation stage, Firstly, of course, networking is ubiquitous. It's everywhere and I can get whatever I want, within reason. There's lots of things called legislation that has some, some nasty little surprises for you in certain countries. So you have to communicate that to them. But then secondly, you have to say to them, you know, defense of your network or defense of your information is clearly not just down to one thing. It's down to a whole multitude of capabilities that you will deploy within your environment, whether it's at your application level, whether it's a systems or a process, or whether it's just the, de the devices that you actually sort of give to people as being the accepted devices they can use. Well, I, I, I totally agree. It has to start with what are you trying to achieve? What's the overall business strategy? And then you, you, you've got to understand at what level you're trying to secure. And in fact, very often it's at all different levels that you're trying to secure. I think the app application level security and having the networks around that I think is probably, I would say, the hardest. And, you know, you, you, you're basically able to inf enforce only certain standards across, but otherwise you're in a complete lockdown mode. And so I think the, the security and, and network clearly goes together and it's kind of in hand in hand and how you want to go about it. But it starts with the strategic discussion, starts with the outcomes. And, you know, one part of the business would have a different set of, I would say, specific tactics and goals as part of the overall you know company strategy versus uh, uh, another part one part of the business believes and needs a lot of externalization and a lot of partnering with academia with you know in our case uh, with a lot of data companies and a lot of other external collaborations versus a, a different part of the company you know it's more about actually um, outsourcing or someone else actually operating our systems, so to speak. So the level of access, the level of security, the- It's not uh, linear. It, it's, it's not By linear, far it's linear. very different. So yeah. we, we were talking about it earlier, even in a large organization, you're managing so many countries. Like how do you even get everybody, let's say you do agree strategically that you wanna use a specific service provider. What are some of the challenges that then, as you said, regulators or jurisdictions might not be easy? Well. First of all, I think the, the nature of networks is changing. You know, we used to have our one corporate network, or well, we actually used to have every country had their own little network, which in you know, this day and age doesn't work. We need to interoperate. And uh, so one corporate network is actually quite a good thing. But we are also a service provider, so we also have 
connections to customers, which need to be secure for the customers. The requirements for each customer is different in terms of what they need from a security point of view. On the other hand, you have things happening like bring your own device. Um, so the network, your corporate network is getting extended to everybody's home. And what you said earlier is absolutely right. We need these different layers of, of security. You know, the good old firewalls for your main network, they need to be good. If you have a not a, a small network and lots of small networks, but one big one, then they need to be very, very good. On the other hand, you then also have the endpoint security that you need. You know, if people have mobile phones and laptops everywhere, travel around the tube, etc., that is an extension of your network that needs to be secured. And then with Bring Your Own, you don't even have full control necessarily over the endpoint device anymore. And then you also need to look at securing the data level itself and being able to separate corporate data and private data. And yeah, it's, it's a very much multi-layered um, approach to security now, I think. You've had an interesting discussion in terms of how do you multi-layer and where do you look at things like partnering? Because a lot of the times when you're looking at a multi-layer, you might realize maybe I'm not the best at doing this particular thing and maybe I don't need 17,000 vendors for one particular aspect because I'm just growing one at work. So, so what, what are some of the things or considerations when, when it came to looking at your infrastructure and saying, hey, actually this part needs to be a cloud provider or needs to be a partner? I, I think to, to the point earlier, we first of all ask the question, what problem we're trying to solve? And then paint a picture, paint a simple picture as to what is the problem. We use the, the cake analogy. So we drew a cake and we actually drew concentric circles in it, all the different layers from the application on the edge right through to the data center and the network in the middle. And we took a slice of the cake out and said, that's the application, that's how many layers you've got to go through to be able to get from the edge into the, into the core center, which is your network or data center. We used the partner model. So actually, because I can't afford the expertise at every layer in that exam question there, there could be eight to nine layers from what the business sees as a simple mobile application or a web application through to a network where you want to use it in every country around the world. So partnering is very important. Finding the right partner then can be quite complex, dependent on the type of service that you're trying to procure. They all have their own specialisms and not all of them are the same, regardless of whatever the salesman sells you. So I think due I mean, they're not all interoperable <laughs> and scalable and all secure. Present company excluded, but, but, but potentially not. And I think, you know, Vendor due diligence is really important in the context of actually what you're trying to procure. 